You would never try to start your car like this. Well, that's exactly what people are doing the way they're currently connecting their generators to the house. But in this video, I'm gonna show you just a single thing you can change that'll extend the life of your generator, and you'll be following the most overlooked directions from every manufacturer on the market today. I'm talking about folks that have an interlock set up on their house. Now, this will generally apply to gas generators, but it still is gonna be a good idea even if you're using a battery system. Let's take a look at the way you should be connecting your generator and the biggest mistake people are making. Of course, it all begins with the power going out. The first thing you'll wanna do is to get your generator outside. Don't go down to your panel yet in your house. Begin by starting your generator up. This brings us to the first big mistake. If your generator has a switch like this, something that says eco mode, any sort of a slow speed mode, you wanna make sure that that is switched off. Switching it off is gonna make your generator run at full speed when it first turns on. Now this one might not seem logical compared to that truck at the beginning of the video. That's because most of these small engines do need to be started at full speed. If you put that eco mode on, you're gonna make that engine bog down and struggle. So with our eco mode in the off position, now we can activate the choke. Now in this Harbor Freight model, things are pretty good. This is the dual position valve, meaning that it's gonna switch on my choke and it also opens up the flow of fuel. Your generator might have a separate fuel valve, but either way, you'll wanna put it in the choke position and get your generator idling. With your generator running, you'll wanna immediately switch that thing off of its choke position and now just let the machine idle, but still keep the eco mode in the off position. Now this is critical, you want your generator to have a few minutes to warm up before you get to the next step. Next, it is a good idea to go ahead and connect your power cable between your generator and your outside generator inlet. Now you certainly could have done this before you started the generator, but it really doesn't make any difference. Now the power is out and of course you want it back on quickly, but you don't wanna skip this step. Don't just go and flip your interlock breaker on. Now, if you're not familiar with an interlock, it's a simple safety device that makes sure that your main breaker has to be in the off position before the secondary breaker that's actually connected to your generator inlet can be turned on, thus preventing any sort of illegal backfeeding from taking place. Now, of course, you could just flip your main breaker off right now and turn your generator on, but you would be causing a huge problem. All of the breakers in your panel are currently in their on position, and that's because your house just had power. Everything is still probably on. You do not wanna just go and switch your interlock breaker on. Instead, you need to turn off every one of your individual circuit breakers. Now this might sound like a lot of work, but it is critical. If you were to just throw your main breaker on, every breaker in your house that was energized would suddenly be drawing power. You are slamming that load or the rush of current to your generator all at once. You're gonna cause undue wear and you are absolutely not following manufacturer's recommendations. Now, once all of these breakers are off, now it is safe to activate your main breaker. You'll turn it in the off position. Now you can slide your interlock panel upward and you can activate your generator's interlock breaker. Individually switch on the circuits that you want. Now in a house that you don't have enough power to say run everything, you could pick and choose. In fact, a little trick that I use in my own house is certain breakers for things like an electric water heater that I just simply don't have enough power for, I put a red dot on. You could be losing power at like two or three in the morning. You might not be thinking straight, but the red dot tells me these are breakers that I will always leave in the off position. Now, if your generator is big enough that that's not an issue, you can of course just switch on every one of your breakers. When the outage is done, you can reverse the process and that is not a bad thing to do. You can individually switch each of the breakers off and you can turn your main breaker back on putting your house back on street power. Many of the tips that I show you on my channel unfortunately cost money, sometimes a lot of money. This one is completely free and it will make a difference. If you've got other generator tips, be sure to share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Silver Symbol channel for more videos coming up.